Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Bexley United Methodist. It's Palm Sunday. Glad to see so many people joining us. Let's go ahead and stand for our first song here. We, we sang this for the first time last week, and uh, so I want us to kind of get familiar with it. This is Faith. that can't be parted there is no mountain that can't be moved i know there's help for the heavy hearted the weak can find their strength renewed you just gotta have faith you just gotta have faith it's not for the shame Welcome to worship, Hosanna. I have uh, just a couple announcements. This is Holy Week, and we have services on Thursday, uh, Monday, Thursday. Scott's going to say something about the 6 o'clock service. Uh, at 7 in the sanctuary is traditional Monday, Thursday worship. 
Friday, Good Friday, um, is at noon. And then there's the Easter egg hunt, which Scott will also announce, and Easter. Um, so you're all invited. If you have been doing your Lenten bags, um, please remember to bring them back with the contents for next Sunday and put them by the Lenten tree so we can share those with others. And um, I'm going to leave the rest of the announcements for you to read. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Just real quick before we uh, go, I wanted to talk about some other family events that are happening. Oh, thank you, Kyle, for turning me on. Uh, at 6 o'clock, we have our family foot washing service. That is for parents of kids or parents of youth. So if you are planning on coming, since this is the first time we're doing something like this, we just want to make sure we have enough supplies for everyone. So if you're planning on coming, please either let me know or sign up on Realm. Also, our Easter egg hunt is going to be at 9 o'clock on this Saturday. Uh, if you are planning on attending and you have not pre-registered, please do so through Realm. If you pre-register, you will get a free gift for each of your children. So uh, those are my announcements. Fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I'm come, and I hope I like good pleasure safely to
I bet that the first Palm Sunday was kind of zooey too, <laughs> just like us. Um, let's, let's have a word of prayer. Dear God, we thank you for the opportunity uh, that we still have to proclaim you king and to give you our praises and to follow you with joy. Uh, be with us as we worship today and be with the children as they sing your praises. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're going to start out with
Good morning. All right, can I squeeze in here and sit up here? You got room? Thank you. All right. So, so don't forget about the Easter egg hunt this coming Saturday, okay? And you can tell your friends and everything. It'll be a lot of fun. So put that there. Okay. So let's say our favorite verse together, okay? This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Okay. All right. I've got three great Easter bunny riddles for you today, okay? All right. Because next Sunday's Easter, you know. Okay. All right. Riddle number one. Why did the Easter bunny wear a hat? Why did the Easter bunny wear a hat? No. Anyone know? No. What, what, no. <laughs> Anyone know else? I can't hear. I'm sorry. Okay. Why did the Easter bunny wear a hat? Because he was having a bad hair day. Where did Terrence go? All right. Terrence must have seen the riddles before. All right, riddle number two. What does the Easter Bunny do after he takes a shower? What, what does he do after he takes a shower? He goes to bed. Goes to bed. That's a good guess. What is the hair? Uh, he brushes his teeth. What's that? He uses a hair dryer. That's right. Hair dryer. See, it's H A R E. All right. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. All right, riddle number three. What is the Easter Bunny's favorite restaurant? Everybody should know this. The one that has the best food? The one that's excellent? That's a very good guess. Very good. I hop, that's it. I hop. All right. Okay. All right. So everybody know what today is, right? What is today? Palm it's Palm Sunday. That's correct. Okay. And Palm Sunday begins um, the week we call Holy Week. Okay. So Palm Sunday is named for the day that Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem. He was riding on a donkey, and the crowds lined the entrance to Jerusalem and waved palm branches at him to welcome him. Okay? They had heard about Jesus, and some had probably heard him preach and maybe even seen him perform miracles. Okay? So, okay. so, so, um, but, their love for him would soon change. Those that feared Jesus and convinced the government that his preachings were dangerous and against Jewish laws. And he was telling people that he was the son of God, that he was the Messiah. So he was put on trial, and within a few days, he would be put to death, crucified on the cross. Okay, and next week, we're going to celebrate the miracle that happened three days after Jesus died. So you need to make sure you come back next week to hear the rest of the story. Okay? All right. You don't know who Paul Harvey is, do you? All right. Okay. All right. So next Sunday, we'll finish the story. All right? Okay. We're going to sing a song about what we learned here. And we're going to sing it to Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. And we need help from everybody out there. So here we go. Um, I'll start us off. You ready? Into the city Jesus came, the people cheered and called his name. But they'd betray the Son of Man, salvation was God's perfect plan. Into the city Jesus came, the people cheered and called his name. Okay, very good. All right, let's say a prayer together. You ready? Dear God, we thank you for sending your son Jesus to show us just how much you love us. Amen. Okay. 
All right. So since you guys are, um, do you know what peeps are? Peeps are like for people. Yeah. So you are like God's little peeps. So today, Mrs. Palmer is going to hand out a peep to every one of you to get the the Christmas or the Easter week started. Okay. So if you go over there, she's got a peep for every one of you. Okay. All right. All right. There you go. Off you go. rest of us can greet each other in Christian love.
The Lord be with you. Are there joys and concerns you'd like to share today? Yeah. My mom's a Yay! For, um, a, a, for a good uh, recovery for Rochelle's mother, uh, Lord, hear our prayers of thanksgiving. Other joys or concerns? Mm -hmm. For a great cleanup day yesterday, good team effort. Um, Lord, hear our prayers of thanksgiving. Others? Annie? Yeah, for for people who have um, lost loved ones and um, their homes and um, so many things that are part of their communities uh, and due to the storms. Lord, hear our prayers. Yeah, for um, Alicia's work with Thrive to Five and um, Church for All People, our sister church. Lord, hear our prayers. Yeah. For all the families um, and for the whole community that was affected by the shooting, um, Lord, hear our prayers. for the families of the soldiers who were lost in the Black Hawk helicopter crash. Lord, hear our prayers. Anything else? Let's be in a spirit of prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for the opportunity to think on um, praise and giving you praise. We thank you for this day in which um, people got it right they celebrated and welcomed you as Lord and King. Um, we ask, Lord, that you would be with us as we praise and try to follow you. Give us your wisdom, give us courage and strength. Be with all of those in our communities who are hurting this day, um, who are isolated and lonely, who don't know your love, who are struggling to meet material needs or burdened with illness. We pray that you will be at work bringing comfort, and we ask that you would allow us to be part of your great work. We ask all of these things in the name of Jesus, who came and taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture is from um, Isaiah chapter 50. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher. This is one of the... Um, scriptures that is seen as a prophecy about Jesus. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. 
The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helped me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. It's customary on this um, Sunday that celebrate Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, calling Palm Sunday, that we also hear the rest of the story because when we come back um, next week, so much will have happened, so much in that last week of Jesus' life revealed who he was, who God was using him to be. And um, so we don't want to let those powerful events and stories go untold. Sometimes churches use um, a cast of people to read aloud the ending of the gospel, of one of the gospels, um, so that they get a chance to hear those stories. Um, Since we have access to beautiful artwork, I'm going to kind of do some of the events of that week as they're depicted in art as our passion narrative. So uh, Jesus is welcomed as a king, and these first two are pictures from around the world. There's a Palm Sunday celebration in the Honduras. And on the little island of Vanuatu, Presbyterian youth do a traditional dance on Palm Sunday. The people that day, back on the original day in which Jesus deliberately entered in as a king, Jerusalem was like, if you would imagine putting together into one place, Washington, D.C. and Vatican City. Jerusalem was the center of religious and governmental power. And Jesus, who walked in all of his ministry, as most people did all the time, asked his disciples to go get a donkey so that he could ride into the city. Solomon rode a donkey when he was becoming Prince uh, King Solomon from being prince. So he was making a statement as he rode into the city, and there were people who joyfully acknowledged that this was what was happening. The king was coming. They broke off branches from trees and waved them and laid their cloaks in front of his path. The next thing that happened is that Jesus went to the temple and cleansed it. So he comes in as the the prince of peace and immediately goes in to a rather forceful overturning of the temple uh, change, tables of the money changers. And the people who were uh, using that as a way to kind of make it difficult for people to poorer people to make their sacrifices. It was a strange way for the Prince of Peace. He was a king who didn't first and foremost go after foreign adversaries or the overlords of the government, uh, the Roman rulers. He actually went to cleanse the place that gave people access to God. And probably... uh, made some economic interests that were fairly close at hand, angry in the process. He was anointed. This king allowed some of the people who were neglected and uh, seen as lowly and unworthy to come and give the most extravagant acts of devotion.
Jesus shared a final meal with the disciples, and at that meal, he indicated uh, that he was planning on not being with them, and uh, he also gave hints that he knew some of them were not going to stay with him all the way. Someone was going to betray him. Someone was going to deny him. And yet think about what it means that he continued to have communion and supper with them. What kind of leader puts that much trust in people even when you know they've already been in the works to fail you and yet continues to invest in them? Very different portrayals of the Last Supper. Jesus washed his disciples' feet on that last night of his life. It's also when he taught them that a servant, um, the greatest of all, is one who serves others. He told them that he was um, washing their feet and that they were to show one another that they loved one another by serving one another and washing one another's feet. How many leaders lead actually by being servants? Jesus washing his disciples' feet is one of the favorite, um, is one of the most portrayed uh, works in sacred art. Jesus prayed in Gethsemane and struggled with the will of God. And the disciples who were asked to stay awake and pray with him fought to stay awake and went to sleep several times. See the disciples sleeping there in the little. Part of his prayer was take this cup away from me, yet not my will, but thy will be done. Jesus was betrayed with a kiss by one of his inner circle, brought the guards to where he was in prayer. Jesus was arrested, interrogated, and punished. Perhaps the punishment was hopeful that it could dispel the crowd's anger. Peter, who'd been perhaps his most faithful disciple from the beginning, denied him three times. I 
I do not know the man. Urged by the crowd, Pilate sentences Jesus to death. Jesus is crucified with two criminals. As he dies, he's mocked by soldiers, onlookers, and one of the criminals. This last piece of art is by um, a contemporary American artist and theologian, Lauren Wright Pittman, and this work is called The Choice. I want to share her, her interpretation of her writing. She said, Jesus offers the crowd, that's us, a layered and complicated choice, one that is as complex as his own dualistic nature. The first option is self-denial, and a lost but saved life. The second is gaining the whole world but forfeiting life. It's easy for a seasoned Christian to take this choice for granted. This choice that Jesus calls us into may even seem like a no-brainer, but in this moment, Jesus teaches of the terrors that will befall him and invites the crowd to knowingly face that path alongside him. If we're honest, it's extremely difficult to reject the tempting power and wealth this world has to offer and to allow our life to take the shape of good news for all. The choice isn't an obvious one. One side looks like an opulent pile of riches, a crown, and endless power, while the other looks like tattered and worn hands with new life blooming out of wounds, work, burdens, and relationships. This choice may seem like a distant decision made long ago, but it's a decision to be made every single day, one moment at a time. And working for and with those who are poor and oppressed, and working for and with the coming kingdom of God, we will find ourselves. And on this day, we celebrate those who got it right, as Jesus entered, they worshiped and proclaimed him king, as he still is today, king of kings. Hosanna, save us. Hosanna, alleluia. No, it's a print. And so the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, and gave thanks to God, and broke the bread, saying, this is my body which is given for you as often as you eat of it. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks to God, gave it to his disciples, saying, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. And so as we come to this table of Christ's sacrifice, of God's grace, we offer ourselves in union with Christ's offering for us as a sacrifice to the King of Kings, as we follow him, as we love him, as we serve him and alongside him. We offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving. Hosanna, hallelujah.
you are invited to this uh, Lord's table. I'd uh, like the ushers and servers to come forward. This is an open table. Um, you are welcome to receive the elements. If you um, respond by faith to Christ's call, and um, you do not need to be a member of this church or um, a United Methodist, anyone who comes by faith. My Lord, he said unto me, Do you like my garden so green? You can stay in my garden If you will feed my sheep And I'll return in the cool of the day now is the cool of the day. Now is the cool of the day. The whole earth's a garden, the garden of my Lord. And he walks in the cool of the day. My Lord, he said unto me, Do you like my garden so green? You can stay in my garden, But set my people free, And I'll return in the cool of the day. Now is the cool of the day. Now is the cool of the day. The whole earth's a garden, the garden of my Lord, and he walks in the cool of the day. And he walks in the cool of the day. send us now into the world in peace with thanksgiving in our hearts and trust in your goodness. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's rise for our final song. We're going to sing Bless the Lord for 10,000 reasons, whatever you want to call it.
burdens you're carrying go forth from this place knowing that God is carrying them with you and you can trust God with this day with this week with every aspect of your life for God is good and his goodness is forever go in peace amen <laughs>